going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, I'm the Dumb Jean. and Hungry. <laughs> it's a good thing we are uh, not live, huh? Yep. Maybe we should keep that. No, it's fine. You want? To- <laughs> <laughs> we can keep that. <laughs> I just felt bad because you like you were like you were going on a ride and then just got knocked off. <laughs> just fender bendered you. Oh man, she's uh, she's already taken over. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And this is Jamie. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for joining us. We hope you're doing all right. We're joined once again by Jamie, a.k.a. Jammers. Welcome back. Thank you. And uh, Happy New Year and all those good things to you. How are you doing? I'm good. Like, it's a fun weekend. I'm about to return back to work. Uh, we're about to be open at our restaurant um, for the new year, which, uh, I mean, I'm not... Uh, it's like, whatever, you know, to be quite honest. <laughs> Uh, like I had a nice break and I, yeah, I think I just need to, you know, get my feet wet again and then get into that groove of working. Sure. But yeah. it sounds like you had a nice kind of break in between like a few weeks off to kind of. Yeah. It's, it's a really weird having a restaurant, uh, like, like on a campus because mm-hmm. you follow this academic year, which a lot of teachers are probably, you know, if you're a teacher out there, you're familiar with like, you know, holiday schedule. And to me, like, you're lucky if you get Christmas off, like yeah. just Christmas and mm-hmm. maybe the day of New Year's. Uh, but I had two and a half weeks off. Oh, man. That's, like, unheard of. It's, it feels like in the restaurant it's industry. It's unheard of. I think a lot of restaurants were doing this uh, during the last few years, including, you know, the pandemic year. Mm-hmm. But as, as we're getting out of it, I guess, to me, the pandemic is still going on. But as of course. as it's getting less and less fatal and, you know, morphing to these different, like, strains and stuff where maybe all you get is a cold... Um, I noticed that restaurants, they're open now, like the day after Christmas or like, yeah. you know, they're open the day of like New Year's Eve. Maybe it's like a shortened day, but it's kind of starting getting back into its uh, regular capitalist schedule. <laughs> and uh, for once, I'm I'm glad to be not a part of that, I guess. Yeah. 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 So it's been really nice, uh, you know, n- you know, having some days where I just didn't do anything and I just got to. I just got to like enjoy and rest and, you know, be with friends and stuff. That's good. You can give us another, some ideas of like uh, how you were able to relax and. and... Uh, I, I like played a lot of board games. I had lots of friends that were uh, from out of town back into town. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just like so easy just to like meet up at a cafe or a board game cafe or something and crack a game open, bring some snacks. Um, I had a lot of friends that like actually like cooked and like we did like potlucks where we just like brought snacks or Mm. food from different places and we would like nosh and game. I thought that was really fun. Um, I saw some movies. Uh, I, uh, I, I took naps. (laughs) Naps are good. They're so underrated. I feel. They're really underrated (laughs) and, uh, it, it didn't end with like a work nightmare. So it was just like very nice. So yeah, it was a really restful holiday and, uh, now working in on a college campus, I guess what I'm, I guess uh, what I'm focusing on now is like spring break, and then, oh, yeah. and then I believe something that they like they call it commencement, which is the graduation right, right. of like whoever's graduating from the university. So I mean that'll be it'll be exciting just to see you know families and I guess be a part of their mm-hmm. like memories. I guess <laughs> of them like graduating college or something so it'll it'll kind of be cool there's always something going on at the campus so it'll just be really nice to see that and then you know it'll be nice because i'll be getting a spring break exactly and i'll be getting a summer break and i'm starting to figure you know like i'm starting to find like how fun it is like having weekends off because i haven't had a weekend off i think since high school yeah yeah Yeah, like literally and when i wasn't working And then once I started getting a job, like, you know, movie theaters and stuff, it's like those places don't close. So Mm -hmm. I just immediately started getting used to working holidays. And it was like no big deal to me because it's like when you're in an Asian family, it's like I'd rather see my friends than my family. (laughs) So I just got really used to working that schedule. Um, But now, yeah, I, I like these I I treasure these weekends, Uh, you know, when you work in the restaurant industry in LA or really wherever and, Mm -hmm. uh, you just, it just doesn't exist to you. A weekend to you is like Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some odd kind of offbeat, uh, kind of schedule that, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm actually enjoying this. Like 
you know, because some restaurants, like, I could never try because they'd be closed the same days, too. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, oh, I can't go. And I can never go to Smorgasbord. And it's like, oh, I have the opportunity now to go to these places. Yeah. 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 And get, you know, maybe some half days, I guess, uh, depending on the holidays and, you (laughs) know, the breaks, you know. It's really wild. Like, yeah, like, I have a half day this Friday because, like, we're off on MLK Day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I really think that, you know, he's a huge influence. If he's taught in the history classes, like, I think everyone should be off, including restaurant people, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's really crazy to even have that weekend off or President's Day. Right. Yeah. Like, what? (laughs) (laughs) So really interesting. Um, Still, I've only been like three months old, like working there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll be really interesting just to, to get a full like assessment of the year. And that way I can plan accordingly. But yeah, I think uh, to have a restaurant on a school campus is very peculiar. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also, yeah, I was going to say busy days. Like to me, a busy day now is a Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And then Friday is like. It's dead. It's dead because, yeah, everybody still has like these hybrid schedules where Mm -hmm. they're just they just rather work at home. And I can even feel it like even the traffic like it's even like the traffic is lightest on Friday, which is crazy. Mm hmm. You know, um, cause to me that should be like your heaviest day. Right. And yeah, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So very exciting. Um, well, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's a change for sure, but hopefully, uh, you know, you enjoy it, you know, when you can and, um, good. Glad you had a, had a good break. Yeah. You know, it was really great. Um, I also remember you had shared that you had, uh, you know, uh, visited, uh, the happiest place on earth. No. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we went to, me and my fiance, we went to Disneyland like about a week before Christmas and, uh, you know, we don't have kids, uh, so I just wanted to enjoy the the park uh, at its emptiest, which is the morning. Right. So we got up super early, uh, we went in there and we immediately tackled, um, what is it? Is it called like it, Tomorrowland? Uh-huh. And then what? what's the Star Wars land called? I think it's called Star Wars. Is Land. it really? Called Star- <laughs> I think it's called Sorry, Star- <laughs> I just have not been to Disneyland like the last like five years, and then even like the last time I was there, it was like pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's just like really packed now. Like you know, back in the day, you can go there on a Tuesday or something, and and then it just like maybe it'd be like twenty minutes for rides. But I guess it's just year round where like just everybody just wants to go there. Yeah, uh, it was good though. Like I mean, you really can't. Um, fall to disneyland for bad food like i everything i ate was like good oh yeah um so and it's like and i and i hope that and i think that they do understand that you're paying so much money and you're standing in all these lines so it it better be worth it to you Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah i mean um i didn't really buy anything like i think me and my fiance got got away with only spending 60 dollars all in all not bad yeah because we had to like someone walk us in because i would never ever pay for disneyland (laughs) It's in, in its entirety. It's just crazy. Um, uh, yeah, so we had a we had lunch at, like, somewhere in Star Wars land. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Like, um, I think I, I had, like, a, a short rib dish. It wasn't too far away from um, Smuggler's Run. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it was a really cool inside. And then I also got, like, some sort of a weird, like, cold brew with, like, cocoa puffs on the top. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's really whimsical. Yeah. You know, yeah. their dishes in Star Wars land. It's cute. I kind of wish there wasn't TikTok so you can just like figure stuff out on its own. On your own, yeah. But I mean, at the same time, TikTok's really useful because it's like, okay, cool. Like, I know what I'm kind of expecting going in there. I don't kind of have to waste my time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I like it, you know, I'll just like bookmark that TikTok and then go there. Right. Kind of like what we did with this dim sum place. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) We'll definitely get to that. Yeah, it was cute, you know. Um, But yeah, Disneyland is just so expensive. I It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they got to figure something out with the the crowds because it's like I understand that like pandemic's over and Mm -hmm. people can go there now and stuff, but at the same time, like, you know, there wasn't a, there wasn't like a disease before and there were dead days. So I don't know what it is and they keep hiking up the prices, but people keep managing to pay yeah, for it. So. Exactly. They're still willing to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if people are still willing to, they'll, what, how much more can they get away with? You know? Yeah. Um, but you know, that, uh, that was the old, uh, the old Bob. Well, the old Bob is back, but replacing the new Bob. I, I hope I don't it know. makes things better. 
I, I, I certainly hope so. But I'm glad you got to enjoy and uh, thank the friends that uh, they can help us uh, get to those places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, very cool. Um, well, maybe you'll uh, maybe we'll we'll find a time to you know go out there together and uh, try to explore that. Uh, yeah, I think together. it'd be cool to do a Disneyland food episode, yeah. like. You know, yeah, I think yeah, because be you're nice. right. I think a lot of the food, you know, there is actually quite decent. You know, there's there's not sure. really a bad bite. You know, and they do do like seasonal stuff. Like, yeah. you know, right now we have a Lunar New Year coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, and uh, I know for a fact that they're doing like a special menu. Probably, mm, yeah. they usually do something with that, depending on like the holidays and everything. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh man, now you got me. Now you got me going. I'll be looking <laughs> forward to that. Well, you know, as for me, I um. I tried to lay low. Didn't didn't have too much time off uh, this year as I as usually would. Um, probably about a week, which is still which is still nice, um, but mostly still I don't know catching up with stuff um, around the house, house projects and this and that. But um, I was glad to visit a couple of spots. Um, one spot actually near where I am in um, it's in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. It's a um, uh, a Peruvian uh, sushi spot. Ooh. Yeah. So it's called uh, Sushi Nikkei. Okay. And Nikkei is like a specific uh, kind of style of, of cooking, uh, mm -hmm. kind of that, that the intersection of uh, of Peruvian and Japanese cooking. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's uh, with sushi. And so, um, I mean, like for an example, you have like a, you know, like a ceviche, you know, but uh, more Peruvian, but you have very, you know, very high quality, you know, uh, you know, seafood in there. Okay. You know, um, very a very citrusy kind of uh um you know i don't know if it's a juice or a sauce or like, something did they use yuzu or something and, well not quite but but it is but it is uh got a nice acidity uh to it um but then you also have like those little i forget what you call those like those little corn kernels that you have in peruvian um i, I know what they're called yeah, yeah. i, I I don't want to you... say corn nuts, but that's what it is. <laughs> I, I know that's what you were thinking, but a traditional you want to be corn nuts. yeah, you want to be proper. <laughs> right, exactly. That's okay. And, and Everybody also knows what top, you're talking about. And also top with like shaved uh, sweet potato, which was a nice kind of interesting oh, addition that's on there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but among other things, I mean, they had, you know, I'll, I'll have to share a link, uh, you know, of the menu and everything, but um, had a lot of. Uh, you know, typical sushi like, you know, um, otoro and yellow fit, you know, yeah. yellowtail and, you know, tuna and things like that. Just very good cuts. Um, and then uh, and then they have several of, again, like kind of what they call Nikkei style, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether sushi or rolls or, or whatever. So um, that's just one of the many, you know, fun uh, things to that I've had there. Interesting. Uh, so I think it's a place that you would go certainly if you were. Like for a maybe a special occasion, I think. Mm -hmm. Like it, unfortunately, uh, for the price point, I'd rather have Ace. <laughs> Although you're not going there for Ace, but you know, probably if I'm going to spend some money, I'll probably go to Ace. Okay. Uh, but okay, but but like it's something. Ace. But okay. <laughs> 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 just get Ace. But you're um, all about quantity. I see. In this case, in this case, but it is it is an excellent uh, you know restaurant to to visit. Okay. Um, and there are some other spots in LA that that uh, specialize in Nikkei style, and and uh, I just kind of under the radar so i'll have to look into that too but okay. definitely enjoyed that but um but otherwise you know just um you know um chilling at home or or you know visiting family or things like that we had a a late uh kind of post-holiday uh kind of party uh, we did the gift exchange at some mm -hmm. of the you know for some of the friend groups and um so we we uh you know we met up had a little potluck and um exchanged gifts and, and things like that it, it turns out that that no one none of us either either don't know or remember the rules of how to play like secret santa or whatever like we were kind of confused like who do how do oh, we know who got who or whatever i don't know we just was it like uh oh secret santa or are we talking about uh yankee christmas uh i think it's it's a secret santa what is yankee christmas again yankee christmas is kind of it's basically like, like white elephant oh, like white you elephant. get a number oh no no and then yeah. someone steals and you can only steal up to two or three times ah uh, yes locked. not quite no no this is the secret santa you know everyone's assigned a okay a, a person right um and uh I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are i mean like um some people like we're fine with we're cool with it because it it's predictable and we know we know what we're going to get for that person is what exactly what they want mm -hmm. but some people are like oh you need to where, where's the fun in that you know where's the <laughs> removes all the mystery you know and the sincerity <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's hard because you know as adults it's like if we like something we just fucking buy it like oh uh, yeah that's it <laughs> um uh, even even this year like i was wanting to 
you know, we'd go to the board game shops and my fiance was like, okay, if I see something and, and you have it in your hand and you want to buy it mm-hmm. and I tell you to put it down. Yeah. Hint, hint. Yeah, yeah. Put it down. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, like later on when Christmas happened and I opened all the presents, there was a point where I was at a, I was at a store and I saw the, the game and I was like, oh, this game is like $15, you know, mm-hmm. games retail, usually like 40 bucks, at, you know, new and stuff. So I was like, oh, this is a steal. And then I kind of saw him like give me this eye, like these stink eyes. And I was like, okay, I'm putting it down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I never got the hint. I was like, oh, okay, oh, boy. don't buy it. Okay. Um, but I never put two and two together. But yeah, I think it is hard to shop for, you know, for people. And, and in order to get like, you have to really know them if you really want to go off the map, you mm-hmm, know, of mm-hmm, yeah. maybe their Amazon, like you don't even want to look at their Amazon their list. Wishes, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there, there are some people where if I see something and I'm like, oh, they'd never buy this for themselves. That's great. But I feel that that's like getting, I guess, with this, like, <laughs> I don't know if it's like this generation of like traumatized kids. Oh, my gosh. Working through trauma <laughs> and generational trauma. But I really feel like this, like our generation is like, we're going to buy what we want to buy. Uh-huh, right. You know, like figures, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're grown ups, but we're going to buy it. Um yeah, so I think, like, gift giving for people nowadays is really hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and I just think, yeah, we live in such a capitalist economy now, like, oh boy. I see, like, you know, like, my younger, like, second cousins getting presents, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I never got MacBooks or anything, it's like, no. at my age, I get, like, maybe a Nintendo <laughs> game, like, what is the markup, like, what is the economy now that we're working with, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, I, I... <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll just stick to the uh, the Secret Santa, uh, the wish list personally. Yeah. And just get uh, these people exactly what they want. <laughs> exactly. And if they don't like it, they can, uh, there is a gift receipt, okay? And they can uh, they can exchange it. There are different, like, types of gift giving I will give. Like, I mean, before fucking inflation, I used to go to the joint and order, like, 10 lobsters or something oh from God. them. And then I would just <laughs> give it to, like, couples to share. Like, hey, here's a lobster for Christmas. <laughs> because it's just, like, you would never, you know, it's like, okay, it's like, what do you guys want for Christmas? And then mm-hmm. they'll be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But when you say something like, oh, do you want a crab or a lobster? To eat them? Yeah, 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 I of do. Course. Yeah, so I think that's a that was, like, I think a nice little creative gift that I would do. Mm-hmm. Um, something that's less crazy like that is what my cousin does. She actually does calendars for the mm-hmm. family. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's also like the family photographer. So cool. usually throughout the party or a, a party, she'll be floating around with her camera and she'll take photos or she'll pull photos from like Instagram mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. since I'm never at family parties. And yeah, she'll like piece together, um, you know, get everybody's birthday if anyone's like, you know, babies, whatever, um, partners. And uh, yeah, she'll, and I think that's a great present too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think something like that is a is a good gift too as well. But like I said, it yeah, it's hard to f- to go shopping for people nowadays, I think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh again, that's why gift receipts exist. So, if you don't like it, just <laughs> Trade it back or get an Amazon gift card. I don't know. I mean, the present <laughs> that you've gotten me and the present I've gotten you, like I think we're pretty good at knowing each other. Yeah. Like, I think we got a pretty good record. Yeah, uh, it's so easy. Far. It's like food. Does it have anything to do with food? <laughs> You know, <laughs> like, yeah, so it's all about knowing the person, I think. Sometimes I don't like Secret Santas because um, I know that last year with my, like, the staff at the last restaurant I was at, like, this total, this dude that I have, like, I never talked to. Not We're not friends, and I, we're certainly not enemies at work, but it's just, like, we work in two opposite like sides of the restaurant Mm -hmm, so it's like mm -hmm. it's not a lot of time or like not really like any time to like get to know him or anything so luckily there was like a link where we can put like a wish list Mm -hmm. i think i asked for like a light bulb slash kind of like knife like combo just because like i walk my dog at night and i think (laughs) what he ended up getting me was a switchblade oh my god and a tiny flashlight Um, Talk about tactical. I mean, that's knowing him, he went to the liquor store by his house and got it. But (laughs) hey, you know what? Like when I'm on the subway, I use that knife. I've never had to use it, but like it's in my pocket when I'm walking my dog. Like he got me a he got me this really cool flashlight. Like I don't know if these this is the new standard nowadays, but it's USB. Like you can charge it USB. No kidding. It's pretty and it's really tiny and it's Mm -hmm. really bright, but. I mean, that was like, so that's kind of like a four secret Santa, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, I got lucky and I ended up pulling like my friend, like my work friend, 
Um, and he's just super easy. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I ended up going to now serving and getting him like some kitchen supplies. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah and a book. So it was like done. Okay. Yeah. I even made him go get it himself. Okay. <laughs> you work for this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I told Ken, <laughs> I told Ken the owner, <laughs> right, like, right. hey man, I know it's under my name, blah, blah, blah. I was going to pick it up. This is actually his Christmas present. And he's like, okay, I'm going to pull the, the receipt. I was like, yeah, he's not going to. He's not going to return it or exchange it. Just give it to him and that's it. He's like, yeah. okay, cool. So, <laughs> oh boy. This year, I think, I think next year I'm going to shoot that for my, for my employee. I'll, I'll probably do that for, for this new job I'm at. I'll probably do that with them because I, I didn't know what kind of power and, and what I can do in there. And then now moving forward, I know that I can, I can actually throw them a party. I can do a secret Santa right. using the university's money. There you go. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. There's money to go around. Yeah. With, uh, that, especially with them. Yeah. yeah. This university has a ton of money. <laughs> and university has a Lululemon like, um, like compilation or whatever, oh, or like boy. collab. <laughs> Has the money to to get me to do some pizzas and yeah, uh, exactly some streamers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the least they could do. Yeah, I so think. that was the holidays uh, um, on my end. Good, good. Well, glad um, glad to hear that, and hopefully, uh, look forward to I don't know a better better year ahead. I hope you know it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, but uh, it it's fine. I I think uh, we actually started it uh, pretty good uh, this year. Actually, today I'd, I'd say it was a pretty strong start to the year because uh, um, what we'll talk about uh, shortly um, some of our our food adventures. So, um, but yeah, I want to thank you and thank everyone here again for joining us and and um, as we continue to talk about you know our favorite um, you know places that we visit and and food spots and pop ups and restaurants in between and uh, just everything. Um, you notice that it's uh, really just me and Jammers today. Uh, my chow is uh, what is it, indisposed, or I don't know. He's just not he's here. Anime okay, <laughs> he's so we can be honest about that. He's enjoying his like, anime. Yeah, he's at anime. That's that's fine. So um, we'll we'll catch you uh, for sure. So don't don't worry. Uh, he's not going uh, nowhere. Not if I have anything to do with it. So. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we wanted to just kind of talk about, just start off things with the new year and, and see what we're looking forward to. Maybe reflect a little bit on, um, you know, what we've enjoyed so far, but, uh, we just want to start off here on, um, a place that we visited today and, uh, Jammers, I think if you can, you, you found out about this place, I might've seen it in my radar, but didn't really look too closely into it, but we did get to try this spot today. Uh, it's called Bistro 1968 out uh, in San Gabriel Valley, the SGV. Uh, what can you tell us uh, about this? And do me a favor. Um, basically, you can eat the microphone, you know, the equivalent of just <laughs> just don't be afraid to, you know, get in there. Okay. Um, you know, like I was, uh, I was in my office, I was doing some office stuff, and then I was just... Uh, I also like to still read a lot about like food openings and stuff. And I just recently saw that it opened up in uh Pasadena SGV and mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, like a new like dim sum place. Yeah. And I saw the photos and the photos looked really good. It and sure did. Uh, I tried to look for a website, no website <laughs> as uh, typical. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say <laughs> Chinese restaurant. Right, yeah. Typical Chinese. Like, no, it's interesting though. Cause it's like, okay, great. No social media. No, mm -hmm. no one, no one at that helm. So this means, like, uh, obviously some, like, word of mouth is is spreading through there. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I like Yelp reviews and uh, whatever with, like, lots of... If I see, like, in the thousands and a consistent score, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go there. Right. But I did notice it was, like, a soft opening. So I'm like, okay, there could be... This could be shitty <laughs> if, it's, <laughs> if it's in its soft opening. It could to, suck. <laughs> yeah, because soft opening to me is like, okay, we're still getting our bearings. It's not going to be perfect. Um, it might be good. It might not be. So mm -hmm. let's see. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the hours. Hours are pretty good. The hour, it's seven days a week, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, wow. Yeah. that That's pretty... Uh extensive i think for yeah. uh, for dim sum and i'm i'm not like the biggest like i said dim sum aficionado mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. like I, I think maybe i've gone to like two or three dim sum places yeah uh in my life and i'm not like my dad i'm not getting the tripe i'm not getting the oh, chicken feet okay. i'm getting the most you know i'm getting the most, the most basic uh, tamest, uh, yeah tamest items you right. know i want something fried i want something steamed right and then something sweet at the end i guess it's like brunch you know it's like brunch <laughs> to me yeah uh, but I like the little bites. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that likes to order like several different dishes. And I thought about going like on the way home from work one of the days, but I was like, I want like eight items. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah. there's no I'm going to finish all of them. No, like know, I'm exactly. going to go crazy ordering all this <laughs> if stuff. You're, if you're doing it on your own, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I've I've been to dim sum on my own. It's really hard. I'll get like <laughs> I'll get like three or four things, and then I'll take a bunch of stuff home, and then yeah, I'll eat it like I'll eat over the course of a week and stuff. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I'm you know then I start to get like really burnt out. Yeah. So I I also think it's like really fun, you know, with friends. I Absolutely. Think I'm a, I'm assuming that's what the point of dim sum is. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I think to get so. together with people and have like little bites and. You know, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I just was like really intrigued about a lot of their dishes. Um, so they have this like this one Instagram photo of like this abalone on a tart. Mm. And I was like, OK, I want that. And then there was another, another one um, where it was like uh, a m- morel mushroom on top of a dumpling. Oh, yeah. That looked really good. Yeah. Oh. And that looks good. And that's when I called you and I was like, hey, let's go. We need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go get some dim sum. <laughs> and uh, and surely we did. And it was uh, it was a good call. I got to say. Yeah. We um, so so where this is, you know, for those in L.A., you know, you're off uh, the 10 freeway. You mm-hmm. exit off uh, San Gabriel. You head north. And I don't know if you can describe your impressions again, describe kind of the place and how you saw it as far as the space, you know, um, it kind of looked a little industrial, didn't it? Well, first of all, I got there early. Uh, they, they do have underground parking, mm-hmm. but I don't think it opens up until a certain time because I guess not because when you were there, because when so I rolled closed. up, like it, nothing, the gate wasn't opening. So I ute it out and I was like, Hey, you know what? It's Sunday. There's plenty of parking. There is plenty of parking like on the street. Yeah. So I parked right in front of the the restaurant. That helped, yeah. Um the marquee is huge, so it's not in a strip mall. It's okay. it's on its own place on on the street. And um like I think nobody was lining up until I saw like a bunch of old ladies line up. <laughs> and I was going to say I don't know about you, but they're brutal, man. They're like they're notorious cutters. Like I just remember a long time ago going to a boiling crab uh-huh. and like uh they just like they bum rushed the front when there was clearly a line. I'm like, look, ladies, <laughs> we were here waiting. You can't just like come up and try to run in. They and, want their boiling crap. And I try mean. to, yeah, try to get sat. So as soon as I saw them milling around, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to yeah. sit, like stand up here with a book. Right. And I did. And then you met up um, shortly after. And it's not like we had a big crowd um, because some places they won't seat you until the whole party's there. I know. I think this was pretty impressive that they allowed us to do that. I mean, we, yeah. Well, I mean, like we were sat at us and essentially like a four top. Mm. So since we put three and then there was, they set us at a four top. It was like, it's easy. The guy will just slide in there. Yeah. Like they don't have to do any. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. If yeah. there was like six of us and like only two of us showed up, I think that'd be a different. Right. Different story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A completely different story. Um, But it was, <laughs> yeah, I walked inside and it looked like a little, like almost like a swap meet maybe because there were what? like, <laughs> no, because if you think about it, there were like rooms, but there were like open rooms. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they weren't four walled. They were like oh, sure. they, maybe two walls up. Yeah. They kind of look sectioned off. Right. Like yeah. almost like little, like kind of booths on their own yeah yeah everything was freshly painted um, did you yeah notice yeah that? very like, fresh like um and then the, but the ceilings were really low yeah i mean they were open ceilings and that you know you could see all the the piping the con you know yeah, stuff and, it was like freshly but it painted was, yeah, like it exactly didn't, it didn't look like any nicks or scratches yeah um and then we noticed the tablecloth was like I said a notepad like, <laughs> for easy cleanup, for like easy turnover. Yeah, I mean you it's could like you paper. could you could feel it like it lo- like it's pretty layers of it. Exactly, you could feel it like it feels soft, like kind of plushy. Um, and like then paper. and then and then when you yeah you look at the end of the tablecloth, there's like several layers. Like, of, maybe because oh, I work in restaurants that I keep like noticing these weird details and I keep commenting on. I mean, it's nothing bad. It's like I get it, you know, like. It's better than wiping. It's even probably easier than wiping it down because you're really just like, yeah. you sweep it off. Exactly. You like crumple it up and it crumples very tiny, like in mm-hmm. a tiny ball. Mm-hmm. And then you put the new plates and chopsticks or whatever. Exactly. Um, but you, yeah, I noticed everything like was in a room and yeah, I kind of wish I kind of sat in the middle because the middle kind of opens everything up. But I think that's where the bigger parties are right, at, right. I think. Um, but yeah, I... I I find that interesting. I almost wanted to see their POS system to see how they broke up the sections. Oh, sure. Uh, but yeah, like in terms of the appearance, that's what, yeah. And then there was like different, like different rooms were painted like red mm-hmm, or green mm-hmm. or just yeah. white. So it was for the ceiling to be like dark gray. It was in order for the ceiling, I guess the walls to pop to make it seem like big. It could be. 
Or maybe they're hiding rust. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I, don't I was shocked know. not to see mirrors anywhere. Oh, yeah. Make it l- appear larger, I guess. Yeah, because like, you know, d- some dim some places have yeah. lots of mirrors. Yeah. And then I think also that's like a good thing to kind of see reflections off of people's plates and stuff. Because mm. I want to look at, I want to look to see what other what, people what they're are having. ordering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think also, yeah, so we were kind of the first to be sat. So we were basically sat kind of almost near the entrance, but mm-hmm. off to the side. Yeah, kind of in a little pocket. Yeah. You know, almost a nook, if you will, with yeah. like two other tables, I think. A ton of Pro- tables, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the yeah. in the rest of the area, it's it's a lot of seating. But our particular section here, yeah. Um, and uh, we had uh, John join us as well. So um, he we got to get his take on that, too. And, um, but... Let's talk about some of the food and, um, you know, what we had and uh, what you thought about it. So we, we got, you know, the typical staples, you know, mm-hmm. things like hargau and um, the hargau, you know, uh, there's like the regular, you know, typical white, you know, wrapper. And then they also have a gold variant, right? Um, that's like really pitch black. So Instagrammable. It's, like, <laughs> it's for the gram. Yeah, it's black. And then uh, it has gold, non gold flake. I, I really think it was like it's like, a marker. No, yeah, I think <laughs> they use charm, like yeah. I really think they either use uh, a squeeze bottle or uh-huh. uh, a paintbrush. Yeah, S- something something like that to finish it. Yeah, um, I mean a ton of flavor, but I mean it it really is essentially like this the same hargau. Yeah, but just a little bigger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wanted to say there was more taste to the one with squid ink, the black I one. I think so. I think so. I wonder if that's because a, a of the A little squid more ink. savory. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But, um, I, I mean, regardless. But I was think, it worth it? Because it was like three more dollars. That's true, right? Cause was I, that tiny bit of flavor in the <laughs> shrimp three more dollars? It was worth it for the Instagram, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Those who put it on the gram and social media. But, um, I mean, that's why we got one order of that and then two orders of the regular uh, Hargau. So, yeah, uh, just to kind of try it. But, I, you know, the, the Hargau, the, at least the regular one, like I did feel like it was it had a nice, you know, wrapper that was like soft and, you know, it was plushy. Like when you bite into it, it, it just easily gives away because some of them like even though I think generally like with dim sum places we've been um you know, I visited, I, I do like in general, I mean, I'm not going to turn that down, but you know, the, the wrapper can be a gummy. little gummy. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So this less Dry. so, um, no, this is good. And, uh, so it's easier to kind of chew through and, uh, and enjoy. Yeah. This was like, I don't know if like, you know, sometimes I wonder like, is food actually good or is like the hype up? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, exactly. like tricking us like that's mentally right. if this food is good. So that's what, I was kind of like asking myself when I was eating this, but no, I think it was good. I haven't had dim sum really since before pandemic. Oh so it, it's been like quite a I think long, long time. I think that's a good point. I, I have to remember if the last time I've been to dim sum, I mean, there's probably one time I think when I had family over and went to Lunasia mm-hmm. um, and I told you that, you know, they, uh, they don't really do uh, table service. They just let you order off uh, your phone and then they bring the food to you. Uh, like which was interesting. Too, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's kind of, do they do that? Is that what Lunasia does now? Uh, at least when we visited. And okay. so, um, because this setup is kind of like what Lunasia was before you just, you know, they give you like a list, like, yes, a list. like sushi. Exactly. And you, you kind of specify your quantity. Yeah. You right? mark it off. And then sometimes like, sometimes they'll confirm it. Sometimes they won't. The guy just took it. The guy yeah. was like, cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's, do this. let's just fucking, <laughs> we need to get some orders let's on go. the board for the kitchen. Exactly. Like, yeah, we need to start pumping it out. Cause it's Sunday, baby. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's what to me, like he didn't confirm. And then maybe that's how come we got that whatever order, like on accident, we started getting orders. That's true. I mean, accident. orders that we already, we already got, Yeah, you know, um, like that pork bun and, uh, yeah, like they started, and I was going to say at a certain point, unfortunately, they did start like dropping stuff off where we were like, Hey, we didn't, we didn't order yeah, this and yeah. take it back. I mean, I'd be happy to take it, but I think <laughs> we they, would be so full. Like I was full. so full. I'm even full right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I wouldn't have minded more egg tarts. Yeah. Like that was more really sweets good. to balance that out. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, everything was really good. Uh, yeah, like everything that. looked really good. I don't know if maybe they're still very like fresh or maybe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, this probably, this restaurant probably had the most staff I'd seen in like, you know, I just feel like restaurants in general just always hurting for staff. Yeah. So like to see a full staff, like a restaurant like this, I was like, wow. Okay. 
Yeah, like, and like I said, like, the service was great because, like, anytime I needed water or something mm-hmm. or, like, if we needed, like, a condiment, like, it didn't fall on deaf ears like usual dim sum places mm-hmm. would be. Mm-hmm. Like, it wouldn't be like a chi- like someone, like, shrugging and saying something Chinese and then walking off and then, like, okay, I don't know. Like, and then you had to say it to some other guy, like, hey, you seem like our waiter. Like, mm-hmm. when we needed help, like, they gave us help. So I thought it was, it was good. They were very attentive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. I mean, as part of, you know, being a soft opening, right? I mean, again, they're like working things out, but I think it was like a strong, you know, impression for Mm -hmm. us, you know, for our visit. So I was glad to, uh, to see that. Um, Yeah, it was really good. I hope that their staff keeps showing up to work (laughs) because I think it would suck if they didn't. Because like recently I had gone to like a seafood boil place in like, I don't know what, I don't know if you call it the OC or what. And then they only had like two gr- two people on the floor. Oh man! Um, and then like, you know, it was like impossible to get like one of the tables yeah, bust and, and stuff. Yeah. So it was like making seating hard. So we were waiting. I mean, luckily none of us were hungry yet. Like we just like decided to meet up. So you know, you just tell like how staffing is just so hard in some restaurants right now. You know. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. But well, it, I loved it. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Good. No. Let's continue kind of talking a little bit more. I mean, we had. Also the shumai, which was also, you know, quite good. Just larger versions of your, you know, what you expect from a typical shumai. I mean, everything came out like super hot, like yeah. came right out of the steamer. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. It wasn't sitting there or it wasn't like, like I, I'd like to think that maybe they started cooking like right when the people got, you know, there oh, or it. maybe uh-huh. a little bit before right. because nothing tasted dry. Nothing mm-hmm. tasted old. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, maybe we're glad when we went. Uh, when we did, right? Just, yeah. we were there pretty early, you know, yeah. uh, right at the start. So, um, getting seated right away and mm-hmm. getting served right away. I think first we got first dips, you know, so I think that that was pretty good. Um, I want to get your take there on, um, on the abalone, um, on that dish. Uh, that was a pretty high ticket item to be honest. Uh, oh my God. So they have this, yeah, they have this dish of abalone. It's called abalone tart. Yeah. Um, if you ever search this on the internet or like check our Instagrams or whatever, it's beautiful. It's like this like really like buttery <laughs> baked tart with this huge piece of abalone on top. Yeah. And then there's like a glossy like sauce. Uh-huh. Um, I kind of had to deconstruct it. Yeah. Like I know you were trying to well, bite it. It did deconstruct it in front of me as I was picking it up. It kind of just kind of fell apart oh, to be yeah, honest. <laughs> yeah. The, the crust that they use was like, I don't even know what kind of a crust to like describe, but it was very like crumbly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, um, but what I did was I just kind of took it on the plate and I started eating what was under it at first. No. Uh, was that like sausage to you or something like that? Or it could be abalone. I'm not sure. I, I feel like it might've been a pork, you know, uh, yeah. like minced pork with the uh, caramelized onion in there yeah, it too. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was like really savory. Exactly. Um, and then I tried to to maybe like get like a tight or try to bite a piece off of the abalone, but it was so firm that I had yeah. no choice but to like eat the whole thing. Yeah, it, it was firm, but it wasn't like tough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, like when you bite, when you finally bite into it, like it's easy to give away and then you can, you can, it's just that you, you do need a little bit of force to, yeah. once you. <laughs> like I wonder through. like if I was the wait staff, like I wonder if maybe to offer to at least cut the abalone or something like that oh, in two. Interesting. But I wonder if it'll cut under scissors. Oh, me. Hmm. Cause I tried to do, I tried to do it for a second, like yeah. with the knife and oh, fork uh-huh. and then I can just like feel the firmness of the abalone. And I was like, you know, if I try to push down any harder, like the, the pastry is going to split and yeah. go all over my mm-hmm. sweater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's a little slippery. I, yeah. I, I admit. Yeah. It was delicious though. It was like really savory and like rich and, yeah. and we, at that point we'd be eating everything steamed. So I was like, I need something like crispy or something to mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. offset the texture. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I think that was a solid, uh, a solid choice, you know, yeah. a good, a very good dish. Uh, I was going to say another thing that was weird was when we got the list, a lot of stuff that we wanted that we kept on seeing in photos was oh, right. like crossed out. Mm-hmm. But luckily when I saw like other tables get those items, I kind of asked like the guys like, Hey, is this available? Like, can I order this? And they yeah, were like, you yeah. saw other people get those yeah. items. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering if these were like pre-crossed out just to like give them some like breathing room. Uh, maybe, or maybe it's possible. Maybe they were 86 from uh, the previous day. Yeah. They just and didn't want to print re- out. <laughs> I don't understand like restaurants that don't want to reprint out, re- you know, fucking menus. Like yeah. I, I kind of, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I work in the restaurant industry now. Like I don't like seeing like, uh, what is it? Like, uh, these pens, um, I don't like seeing like these ink pens mm. like crossed out oh, uh-huh. on a menu. Just reprint a menu. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 
or just like have a sign like hey we're out of this this. or something like that Mm -hmm. or have the waiters like hey before you order really so sorry (laughs) and like you know regret to inform you we're out of this right now um but yeah, there are a lot of like we never got to try the wagyu puff pastry. I didn't see it going to anyone's oh, right. table, so I don't think right. they had it available. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but luckily, we ended up seeing the lobster egg roll. Yes, which thank was God. delicious. Yes, Good yeah, call. lovely and fried and mm-hmm. like real legit lobster. Like this isn't like this isn't like imitation crab. This right. isn't langoustine. This is yeah. like lobster. Yeah, yeah. So a that nice, was nice. Like you, like you described, you know, a nice soft uh, lobster in like this, uh, you know, this very fried, crispy fried, uh, you know, shell that you said shatters when you bite into it. It's a very good description. Um, you know, and it's this batter that just, you know, is very lacy, you know, mm-hmm. so um, it's light, it's lacy and it shatters when you, when you bite into it. And then it also comes with like that, like kind of mayo kind of yeah. sauce. I, I kind of like at first I was like, oh, man, I don't think I need this with mayo, but then I but then you did it and you're like oh it helped it yeah yeah Yeah. i mean again when you think about it with a lobster roll you know you have the you you usually line it with Mm -hmm. mayo right i mean uh it depends some places uh will do butter poached i think it was it it's like what is it like it's like new england or connecticut Uh or like cape cod or some shit like that like yeah it's like clam chowder like is it boston or is it like new england oh, like I see. is it red yes. or is it oh, okay so like is it butter poached right, or right. is it mayo okay yeah well if you are from any of those areas uh let <laughs> us know <laughs> give us feedback as to what you put on your lobster roll <laughs> no but I, yeah i get it like i just find it interesting that like chinese i don't really see mayo and then it's like dim sum it's like isn't oh it, do you want a yeah, side of mayo interesting? yeah that's peculiar yeah very odd very out of place but but still very delicious it was a a good pairing um and then we'll get and this next one we want to get to is the um uh I think an item that you had really looked at closely the um the scallops you know topped with the uh, with the morel. Yeah, that just looks really For one, I've never actually had a morel. Mm-hmm. Uh and then it just looked so good in the photos. Uh And just remind us what exactly that is. The morel, it's yeah. a mushroom. Okay. Um it looks like I want to it's almost like honeycomb like mm-hmm. the top of it. Mm-hmm. It's like brown. Uh, and what they do is they put it on top of like a steamed, um, like a steamed dumpling. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know if it was, I think it was like a mushroom dumpling. It's funny. This place doesn't have like any prompts. Like nothing is like gluten free, vegetarian. Oh, no, like, is, yeah. <laughs> so if you're, if you're rolling with those guys, I suggest you just get them a plate of string beans or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Like, because there was like no, even, you know, when you get the menu, there's no pictures, there's mm-hmm. no explanations. It's like, um, minced pork dumpling. Right. Exactly. That's it. Like that's all it's going to say and the price. So, uh, yeah, I don't even know what we were eating, but it was really s- soft and it was good. It was hot. Like mm-hmm. it was really savory. Um, like I said, a lot of the stuff came like super fresh, like right out of the, the window, the service window, like right. to our plates. <laughs> Um, so there were times where I just had to like wait for a second cause I just knew I was going to burn my mouth and my lips. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. If you just went straight into mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You had to take a moment. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a very good, t- I mean, you know, um, obviously the, it was just, yeah, a very, uh, soft, uh, um, you know, kind of a mushroom on top of that. Uh, I think it was scallops, right? Like a dumpling. Of, yeah. It was like a seafood. Yeah. But like uh, I said, it's like, could could I tell you what was in it? No. No, but you know it was good. Yeah. So it was like really good. Yeah. And then uh we also follow that with um uh you know the XLBs, you know, the Shalong Bows. That was kind of that was actually really substantial. Like that was starting to get me like super full by the time <laughs> that came. You know, and I I don't were you like thinking about getting two trays or just one would be enough? Honestly, just one. Okay, was fine. good. I think the the saddest part was like two of them were like came like bleeding already. Right, like right. we're out of like soup. Right, exactly. Yeah, they they had already popped or something, you know. Yeah. So, um, I think, I think if I I I wouldn't have needed to have them mm-hmm. if I was to do this meal again. You could do without them. I could do without them. Yeah, because uh, they were substantially bigger than Din Tai Fung's. Okay. And unfortunately, I didn't get to try like the the broth because um, another thing is they didn't really give us spoons. Right. So that's right. Like, so when you bite into them, then everything just pours out. Yeah. Like, you know, two of them split on me. Like, so it's like I yeah. really didn't get a lot of soup and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. 
yeah, I, I have to I have to remember uh, other places. Actually, when I think about it, I'm not really sure if I usually get Xiaolongbao at dim sum. Um, I'm sure they're available, but I, I guess I don't order them, you know, uh, typically, you mm-hmm. know, I usually go to Din Tai Fung or some, some other dumpling spot, you know, yeah. just for those. Um, but that's interesting, but you're right. The ratio of like the, um, the meat, the soup it was like a meatball, like literally meatball, it really was. a legit meatball dense. Me- <laughs> yeah. Cause the mouthfeel, I was like, okay, that was the mouthfeel. I was like, okay, that was a little bit more than what I was expecting to be in a, in a shallow bow. Right. Right. So that, that was interesting. Okay. Well, we'll, we can, um, we can attack that again differently uh, if we go back. Uh, but the egg tarts were good. You know, oh we my had God, those two. Oh, the egg two. tarts were great. Right? Yeah. You know, just perfectly set, you know, just nice and, and they were like warm. Like jiggly. Yeah, just enough. Just yeah. enough. Yeah, and then the pastry, like, wasn't that crumble. Some, sometimes you go to dim sum place and the, the crust is crumbly, kind of like what the abalone crust was, mm-hmm. but this was like a puff pastry. Yeah. Yeah, these were, I would... I would have not had minded getting another set. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was really good. Well, remember, they did come by with yeah, another set. <laughs> well, like, I, I can tell, like, so I can tell, like, so, you know, so they weren't really floating around, but I think, but like I said, when we were all sit- sitting down, it's like that and then the, the pork buns and stuff, it was like you make them, they could make them in, in bulk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like if there wasn't anyone to run food, I bet they were like, go run these egg tarts because yeah. that'll buy us some time. With all the customers, mm-hmm. like, um, most likely they order, if they ordered it, mark it off, give it to them immediately. Yeah. And that's like one less thing that we have to worry about on their ticket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we'll make sure to keep that in mind uh, to try again because that was really good. And then just lastly, I wanted to, um, this one's for John because um, these were the uh, the minced pork dumplings or as he affectionately referred to them as the football. <laughs> so... Uh, Carmen is uh, very well conditioned to understand what that means, but it's uh, <laughs> it's the uh, the minced pork, you know, uh, the filling, but you know, in the fried kind of mochi, right, uh, kind of dumpling, yeah, uh, ball. But it was more in the shape of a teardrop in this case. It was cute. Like to me, I was like, I feel like I was eating food out of an anime or something yeah, exactly. like that. Um, <laughs> but that one, I thought that was really good too. As far it was really light. Yeah. Um, usually that. Like to me, that and the sesame ball, even though I do like those, are kind of like um, they're just so heavy sometimes. Mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. you'll eat one, and then you finally get to the meat, and then you're kind of like like your palate is just like burnt out mm-hmm. because it's like it was oily, it was heavy, yeah, but it was crispy, and mostly oily. Yeah, moist oil. Yeah, I didn't feel that that much, mm-hmm. and I think that was like pretty shocking to me that yeah. I didn't feel that. Uh, however, I kind of. I, like one for me was enough, mm-hmm. but I liked it. Okay. Um, I said that, I said that when I was at the table, I was like, I would love to eat this. This is like good people watching food. Like I would love to eat this <laughs> and maybe walk around Disneyland or something oh, yeah. and just like, you know, like have no agenda mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my head, just eat it and then just look at people and just take it as it is, yep. take life as it is. <laughs> I don't even, I was going to say, we should, there's got to be a term for food like that, where it's like, you're just eating this, this food is good to just like, to just be, Yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that one of those, that's a dish that, that that's definitely like, I like, but I, like I said, it's like, to me, it's conceptually heavy. Like if you were to order that and eat that first, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to order dishes. I think that was nice that it came at the end. Yeah. 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 Whether it was intended or not. Yeah. Uh, actually, in, initially, we didn't remember if we actually ordered it. I kept it. on looking uh, through so, like the, our, our roster, and I was like, yeah. did we order this? I don't even yeah. know. I did not see the word football on that list. Well, so not I, only that, they were, remember, they were also like trying to drop off shit that we already right, had. Exactly. Like, I was like, oh, no, man, we already got this. Yeah, right? there we was a lot. Yeah. yeah, a lot to keep track of or try to remember, you know, what we had or not. Yeah. So, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. It was good to kind of have it towards the end. Um, but in itself, it was, it was a nice and light, very crispy on the outside, but like as soon, just past that initial layer, like really nice glutinous, you know, mochi, um, inside. Yeah. And then there was like a little bit of like, almost like, I felt like I tasted like, I don't know, it was cilantro or maybe the pandan that they mm. used to make it. Cause it was green, it was green. right? <laughs> so Sorry. That, pandan, that's another detail. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It was really bright and green. So we'll we'll have to see for any of you dim sum experts or linguistic I don't know like if you uh, if you know what's in there uh, let us know okay yeah contact and again, us if, and and for any linguistic experts if you have a term for the type of food that Jammers is talking about that you can have <laughs> and just be let us know as well okay. 
<laughs> but that's uh, that was, I think, mostly what we had at uh, Bistro 1968. Um, overall, uh, it sounds like our impressions were, were pretty positive. Yeah, I, I, I like that place. Um, like I said, it was really attentive and it seemed re- really nice and I was very happy. Yeah, so a good start. And uh, I know they're still going through like a soft opening, um, but we hope they uh, continue to uh, keep up the good good service and, and good food. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll make sure to find our way back there very soon. So very nice, very nice. Well, as we kind of continue to move... Um, uh, look forward to to places like these and in the new year um i don't know i just wanted to get your take on um places that uh, other places maybe that you might be looking forward to or or that are on your mind that you'd want to try or revisit you know um i don't know um uh, on the other hand, you know, if there are other places that you have visited in the past year that, uh, I, I mean, this is a whole range of things. I have no idea, but I think where we're going with this. But. 2023, it's like, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to do like next week. But uh, I, I can tell you that I, I didn't really visit a lot of places in 2022 mm-hmm. um, for reasons why. I, I think I was just tired. And, sure. and then, like I said, the last job that I had, like my days off were about the same as most restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. So there was no way I was able to go to some of these and, restaurants and visit those others. Yeah. Yeah. So I made a tiny list. It's a very small list, but I feel like, um, you know, it was really quanti- quality over quantity this year. Well, go for it. Um, I also think that like the foodie culture in general is just like really oversaturated with Nepo babies and oh boy, you know, Nepo <laughs> babies, TikToking <laughs> shit and fucking, um, just random people TikToking where they went and like what your blah, blah, blah says about you and mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I was mostly tired where I think there were days where I just like didn't even leave the house, yeah. door dashed some door dashed chicken or something like that from sure. Peruvian joint. And then that was it. Um, yeah. uh, so I do have a list. So uh, you know what opened up in 2022 in Pasadena was Tartine. Oh, the bakery? Yeah. And okay. I never really got to experience the... Um, the mouth factory in downtown on the row. Mm. Uh, I definitely had all the books by Chad Robinson that I never, uh, got to cook out of cause they were just very intimidating, but yeah. I have them. Um, but yeah, delicious, delicious, like croissants, like super laminated. I mean, they just oh, know boy. what they're doing. I'm not a, a fan of like, uh, what is it? Like almond paste, but okay. they're Fran Japan. Yeah. Like croissant is my favorite. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have a ham and cheese croissant. Amazing. Also, but yeah, so that was a, a thing that I, uh, in my <laughs> archives on Instagram mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I visited was Tartine. Um, yeah. Another one is a Pasadena staple that has been here for a while that I think only lo- local people know. But I ended up ordering a lot of um, Colin like pickups mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. they they don't have a their inside isn't open yet. Is Top Restaurant? Top Restaurant. Okay. That is actually an Indonesian um, slash like Hawaiian food joint. Oh, cool. Yeah, really nice people, like a really old couple, like mm-hmm. run it. Um, definitely give them your business. They don't have, like, they don't do any, like, DoorDash or anything, but they do take, like, you call their restaurant. Um, closed on Mondays, but um, they have a fried fish, like, um, misubi, along with oh, wow. the usual spam misubi. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, short ribs, like tempura. They do uh, nasi goreng, which is a... F- like a fried rice from Indonesia. Oh, Indo- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. They have nasi goreng. They have like, uh, yeah, Indonesian fried chicken, like a really good place. Nice. Yeah. A lot of like, so a lot of like Pasadena people uh, order there. They go there, yeah. Yeah, really Oof. good. Uh, they they also have this really good combination for 30 bucks where you choose, I think you get like an order of rice, an order, and then you can choose whatever. So usually mm-hmm. me and my friends, we did... Uh, barbecue pork and ribs with a side of like shrimp tempura and all of it was like 30 bucks oh my gosh yeah along what with like macaroni on? salad and it was delicious um, amazing amazing yeah and i don't even like macaroni salad and i was eating this so <laughs> really good um another one that i went to that um, i'm just so i'm just really scratching the surface of the mm-hmm. sgv was absolutely is duck's restaurant it's a japanese restaurant and um I had their katsu curry there, and mm-hmm. it was really good, too. I also had their um, karaage. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, the curry, I mean, RIP Curry House. There's, like, no yeah. um, really decent curry places to go to. I think, to me, the only good curry places now is um, Katsu Sando. Okay. 
uh, in Chinatown, but yeah. sometimes I don't want to go to Chinatown. Right, exactly. Even though it is 15 minutes away. Mm-hmm. And because Ducks is 10 minutes away. Mm. <laughs> and I know I can go get Bopo Mobo, like Boba, like around the corner. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's nice about the SGV. Um, so that was a really good place. Um, another place I ended up going to was La Cita. Oh, wow. Because before yeah. I was going to Lhasa. Well, yes. Yeah. The and then Lhasa. I decided to go to La Cita with a friend mm. and... I loved it. Yeah, their prawns, uh, their prawn dish is really good. Their pork is really, really, they like really dialed it in. Um, I like their chicken fat fried, you know, the rice that they have that they use like the chicken drippings with. Oh, man. Yeah, really good. Um, Lara Lou makes their dessert. Shout out to Lara Lou. They're like really good people. Yeah. Um, they make amazing pies. They also have a kiosk in the Far East Plaza. Yeah. Like I really liked. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Far East Plaza from the same uh, maker of PRD was uh, Gatsu uh, Gatsu LA. Yeah. So this is uh, Instagram based um, from the makers of PRD and they do a Katsu um they do like a katsu pop up every now and then. Um, I suggest you follow them on Instagram, mm-hmm. and uh, they do like a really nice set where you can either get it with egg and rice. Um, that one style, um, I forgot what katsu don, I guess, with rice and uh, like a soy sauce or something like that. And then they do another one, which is my favorite, which is the curry. Mm. And uh, they use the pork from Peds and Barnett's pork. So it's really thick and like the fat cap is like wild. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like so insane. <laughs> so I really, um, so whenever you do a pop, whenever they do a pop up, like definitely just get on it and schedule something. And they're also very like receptive if you're running late or if you can't pick up and then you get something to pick up there. They're just really good about that too. Cause um, the last time. I think I was like running into some, some issues at work and then I ended up being super late, but luckily they, they were just really nice about it and they like held my order mm-hmm. until I got there and then they cooked it fresh. Oh man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a really good place. So definitely follow them. Um, finally, and like I said, this is a short list of 2022 for the places I visited. Tempura Carlos Jr. in Torrance. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Say that again. Tempura Carlos <laughs> Jr. Okay. Uh, that place is delicious. Um, so I guess this guy is from, I guess he's from Peru as well. Mm -hmm. And he like specializes in tempura and, uh, you can get like these, it's in Torrance and Mm -hmm. you got to get there early too. Cause there is a wait. The place is small. Um, they do sushi as well. I think that's at night, but I mean, really the star is the tempura bowls. Uh, so I think there's one thing to sleep on. Uh, there's one thing that you can't sleep on is to get a side of eel tempura and seaweed tempura. Okay. Yeah, it's delicious. I, I definitely want to go back there. It's just, it's torrents. It's like a very long drive, but I definitely. Um, For you. Yeah. <laughs> They're open like seven days a week it's, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I just like saw that. that. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, so definitely go there. And how did you find out about this place here? You know what? I don't know. I think um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll follow, you know, people like local people that I like Mm -hmm. and I'll see who they follow and then I'll kind of just go into a deep rabbit hole if I like them or not. Um, And then through there, I get like different ideas on cooking and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for 2022 and then the rest of the year, like even after I got a new job, like I just really didn't go to restaurants that often because... I just did not have the money. And then Mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. with this new job paying me more money, I get paid once a month. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, even now I think I have, uh, what's the date today? Today is the the seventh. No, it's the eighth. Oh man. So, uh, I have, uh, $200 to last me 18 days. Oh boy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) After everything is paid off. So, um, so I've actually been cooking a lot at home. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of things do you like to cook? Um, okay. So there's this TikTok. Uh, I hate to use TikTok because like, I think I was one of those people that was like, I'll never look at TikTok. (laughs) But like now it's like, uh, I have to set a timer on my phone to like only look at TikTok. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. X amount of minutes. And even then, I think now I, I think I'm only going to let myself look at TikTok when I'm on the treadmill because it just, it really is a time suck. Yeah, sometimes it's a rabbit hole. Yeah, Deep sometimes rabbit hole. it's a good time suck. Sometimes it's mostly bad. But, yeah. Uh, there's a site called Cabbages. It's a, it's a young couple in New York. It's mm. a Japanese couple in New York. And, mm. and they really just cook like these Japanese or whatever meals like um, together and they lay, they lace it over really nice music. Oh, wow. Um, so I've been making a couple of things like off of 
you know, whatever they've been making because it's just so simple Mm -hmm. and they're like Mm -hmm. a simple couple. Um, I think my favorite thing that I did was, um, a roll tonkatsu. Mm. So you take like really thin strips of like pork, like essentially shabu shabu pork. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you take maybe four slices and kind of like fan it out and kind of like, and then what you do is you smear, um, yuzu kosho. Oh, wow. Yeah, or you use really thin sliced cheese. Okay. Yeah, so it's almost like a cordon bleu without the ham. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> if you really break it down, and then you, you roll it, so it's like a pinwheel. Oh, wow. And then, you know, you flour dust it, you dip it in oil, and then you, you roll it in like katsu, and then you deep fry it. Um, unfortunately, what I've been doing is smearing yuzu kosho and putting s- like Swiss cheese. Any, anything wrong with that? I don't yeah. Think so. <laughs> it's like gooey and it's like spicy and yeah, absolutely. Um, it's really nice. And so I've been doing that and then um, making, uh, I think it's called like hijiki rice. So it's like a hijiki is like a seaweed. So you cook rice and then inside the same pot, you put a little bit of sesame oil, soy sauce and hijiki. Mm-hmm. And then um, you cook it and then you just stir it up. So you, and then, yeah, so that's what I'll serve on the side of it. Wow. That sounds incredible. I yeah. Mean, and you made that? Uh, yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah. So if you follow me, you can see some of these things under cooking jammers. That's like my hashtag. Nice. Um, and then, and then another game that I like to play calling, you know, like I said, calling it, I only get paid once a month. What am I going to make <laughs> in my fridge? And honestly, like I, if you know how to make a lot of basics and then you have like a lot of like condiments mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. spices on it, you can like make a lot of stuff. Um, I recently made an, a kimchi jjigae. Ooh. Yeah, with like some pork belly as well. Like mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. yeah, I just saute onions, garlic, um, kimchi, a little bit of like of the soy sauce, sesame oil, um, kimchi, and then either water, but I had chicken broth on hand. Yeah. Like during the pandemic, I amassed like quite a few cans of random stuff. Oh, sure. So I've been kind of actually like been going through it kind of using it Mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna lie like some of these things like expired like 2021 (laughs) you know like early 2000 that's a suggestion okay i guess it's a suggestion because yeah like i busted them open like they didn't they didn't look weird they didn't you know like chicken broth like i just busted it and i was like okay well it doesn't it tastes the same so exactly yeah so I've, i've been doing that and um yeah i look forward to like cooking more i guess this year until I can figure out a budget or something mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. for being paid like once a once month. Once a month, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not bad, but I mean, ideally it would be great if I can be paid like bi-weekly. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just like, it's like you have so much money and then you have like no money like after two days. Exactly. It's like crazy. Um, but yeah, um, in terms of, do you have a, a list for 2023? For me? Yeah. Um, not, not. Quite. I think all the places you mentioned, then I'll add to my <laughs> list now, I think, honestly, because... Angela uh, goes to way more places than I do. I know, um, but I feel like I just visit, like, the same kinds of places. I don't know, like, I just visit my hits or would whatever. Would you say you went to more barbecue places this year? I feel like you didn't go to a lot of barbecue places this year. Maybe not as much, but I think the overall proportion is still a little more than other types of food. <laughs> but, okay. yeah, um, I mean, so, you know, I did I did try to, uh, a couple of new spots um, uh, for barbecue, but... Uh, out closer in you know kind of long beach area mm-hmm. um one of them was um <clears throat> called uh bat batambong and that's okay. a com- like cambodian like texas style kind of fusion barbecue thing um so that that guy um he uh he just infuses like a lot of uh cambodian flavors okay, uh, interesting. With, with his barbecue you know, it's pretty solid mm-hmm. overall. I mean, like as barbecue as it is, like that Texas style. So the brisket, the the ribs, and even like he has like kind of the Cambodian style sausage in there. Oh, wow. Um, it's a little sweet, a little, you know, kind of tangy. And, you know, it's it's a pretty good. And then, um, you know, he'll dress him up on a like kind of a noodle dish or whatever, depending on what he's serving up. But um, that one, uh, that was, I mean, that was like one of them. That was, that was pretty good. I like, again, but in addition to like the spots that you um you mentioned i mean i'll have to add those to to my list um i think we still need to go to uh safi's i don't think we've uh had the chance to no i have you know, not I keep that. seeing it i <laughs> low-key almost got hired working there as a server <laughs> and then i like um that's like a whole not that's not like not really a whole other story but oh we can save it for another story that's fine um but yeah but but safi's uh you know for those you i mean know. i don't doubt it like ori and genevieve make mm-hmm. i mean it's amazing. I'm sure it's not going to suck. Yeah. 
Because, yeah, Bavel is amazing. Bestia is amazing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, Safi has, has to be good. Yeah, but for now, it's a, uh, you know, a dinner time spot. I mean, they got, like, coffee and stuff and, I think, pastries in the morning. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I think we're waiting for that lunch service to come out, um, you know, to be set at some point. Um, And then... uh. Yangban, I think I'd like I'd, to go there. I would like to go there. I want to try their wings, and I definitely want to try their soft serve. Yeah, just yeah. like a very elevated version of uh, you know good comfort food. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's what we need to you know look forward to. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Sometimes again, I'll just uh, for those who do follow me at at Dumb and Hungry. I mean, I honestly have uh, um, admittedly not as active on the posting. You know, I do a lot of stories and stuff, but on the actual posts, I'm pretty pretty slow to it but it, you know this last week i've been kind of posting up a, a kind of an album um like so many each volumes day. how many volumes do you plan on doing uh this we're c- towards the tail end here You're so at I, six okay right so now. we'll probably do one more okay so six <laughs> i don't know like i call them the greatest hits but it's basically like all the places i've been to yes. and uh, i was like he's like all the places he's been to but when i think about it yeah that is that's quite a bit, right? I mean, it's a lot. Okay, <laughs> probably too much for one. Well, man. I mean, like, also, you know, like you've been to these places before. Like, you know, you have Moose up there. I know you've been there. Goldberger, yeah. we love, we love Goldberg. Yes, Alan. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Shout out, Alan. Yeah, uh, it's like I know you've been there. Like we've yeah. been there for years. You yeah. know. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a lot of places that we've visited and revisited. Um, but uh, I think a couple new spots, since I, I mentioned that barbecue spot, I also got to visit uh, Pija Palace. Uh, that's out in... Um, I need to go there. Yeah, yeah. I also have my friend's water bottle that works there. Well, so shoot, shout out then, to Abby. No. <laughs> I need to give that to her. It's like been in my car for months. If, if you're listening, to Abby, you. then, then you need to... She's you need not to, listening to this you podcast. Need, you need to link up, okay? We yeah, just need someone to, let her know I have her water bottle in my car. We need to make that happen. But Pija Place... Uh, uh, or palace was a fantastic uh, place. It's it's very casual, like Indian, like um, American fusion sports bar, you know. So yeah, you got, it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you have like these these uh, really well, you know, kind of fried wings with this, this kind of green sauce on mm-hmm. there, um, and then like a, with a like the cilantro kind of cream too. Uh, and then you have the pizza too, as well. Um, that taste of like, like chutney and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. It, right? Like very, very. You can definitely taste, you know, the, those Indian flavors in there properly, uh, but in a very casual, like easy to, you know, kind of form that we're more the America is more familiar with, I guess. Um, so that was, that was very good. Obviously places like Marisco Salisco is always going to be, uh, That's, you yeah, know, always a staple. Uh, uh, go to, you know, um, we, we, Oh, this was another spot, uh, another barbecue spot. Um, this is Axiom in Long Beach. They uh, again, they 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 do just is really that like pasta. It's like a garlic noodle dish. Yeah. Are they Asian? Uh, no, actually. Garlic I, noodle. Okay. But I don't remember. Um, but they. Uh, that looks so rich. Like it is very rich. It's I like admit. Garlic admit. noodles, and then you're gonna like put a fat uh-huh. slice of brisket on top. I yes. don't think it's bad, but. Uh, no, it's not bad, it's not <laughs> but, bad it is thing, right, but, but it is right. But it is a lot. <laughs> like if I was building a house, I would love a plate of that. <laughs> Bulk up first. Yeah. That's get, like build a house yeah, food. You get know? Get your gains in. You yeah. know. Uh, we've uh, been to Le Coop. You I know? love Le Coop. Le Coop. I went when it was a ghost kitchen, and yeah. then I was very sad when it closed. But I knew they were going to come back, like mm-hmm. in some sort of form. And I, I just never can make it out to Mid City. Yeah, I know it's tough, but now like, they, well, I mean, they're like, it's like K-Town, you know, where they're at now. It's uh, on Melrose and uh, Western. So if you can kind of picture that intersection, yeah. it, it's um, it's pretty no, good. No, their shit is good. I mean, I, I will never eat a chicken sandwich in my life ever again, but. <laughs> if you had to, if you no, were. I'm not. Okay, but, okay. But I mean, they have like chicken skins and they have like a, a deboned thigh. I like oh, that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, the, uh, their sides are really good. The corn ribs, I oh, think, my are God, just the corn something. Ribs yeah. are, just Amazing. something, yeah, absolutely above. So, um, and then I think in this album too, just the following pick, just down the street, mm-hmm. oh, we got the, we got the emergency services coming through. That's got, okay. Everyone's uh-huh. getting a heart attack. Or someone just listening to this. So, <laughs> um, I've, we've mentioned this spot before, like on this podcast, but this is a spot called Gultong, also in K Town, just down on mm, Westburn, yeah. going, uh, Western, going south. Um, this guy is pretty interesting because he, uh, you know, it's just like a one man operation. You know, he mm-hmm. takes the orders, he cooks, he, uh, you know takes the payment he just does everything um but he makes a really good you know korean fried chicken he's got some interesting kind of sauces and toppings on there i mean you've got this original kind of one right here but mm-hmm. then this other one is kind of glazed in a kind of a fruitier kind oh, of sweet sauce i'll definitely um, hit that up because uh, my cousin lives 
like pretty central to all that action, like yeah. where we can walk to it. So yeah. I'll put that on the list. This was a spot from uh, your your friend that you told me about the Straight Up Tacos. Oh yeah, shout um, out to Lachelle. Lachelle, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, this um, <laughs> I, I was in. I was coming home from you know that area uh, one time, and uh, I finally got a chance to go out there and had some very good tacos. I, a lot of them are they got the the you know the you know the type the the beef, chicken, and and pork and things, but they have a lot of good plant based. And like yeah. vegan options too, which I which I tried, and I thought they were very good, um, you know, even without any other protein. <laughs> what I like is she, you know, she came from like fine dining because okay. that's where we that's where we linked up, and that's how we knew each other because we worked in a fine dining area. So, I can, I mean, I haven't been there unfortunately, but I can definitely tell you that the the product there is is treated with respect and yeah, like absolutely. it's not bur- a burn and turn place. You know, it's mm-hmm. definitely all about mm-hmm. quality there. So. Yeah. Big yeah. ups to them. No, I'm glad. I'm glad too. Thank you for uh, turning me on to that because uh, that was a that was a good move. So I was gonna say, um, you know, one thing I definitely want to go of 2023 would be Willie Mays. Sure, it's in fucking the West Side. So like, yeah, I don't know all the way in Venice. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm gonna have to clear a day. I think so. <laughs> it's <a laughs> it's fucking like to go to the West Side is like an excursion for me. It is. It's a field um, trip, man. Uh, like people talk shit about the Valley to go to the Valley, and yes, I. It does feel like an excursion to go to the valley now that I don't live there, but but so does the west side. Yeah, the west side is especially coming from Pasadena. It's like you got to pass like all these cities just to get there. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to put Willie Mays on the list for 2023. Yeah, um, I'd like to put um, uh, like a little bit more fine dining. Um, like you know, I was telling, I was looking at my list for like restaurants that I visited mm-hmm, in 2022. Mm-hmm. It's not that long, but yeah. I mean, if I was to include the the restaurants I'd worked at, like Cato, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I got a piece of something. So it's like I never got to experience the dishes like full. Yeah, yeah, you just get like it's small like, morsel of something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like, okay, guys, here, twenty of you, here's the fish dish. Mm-hmm. Everyone get like a tiny piece and a smear of sauce. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then, okay, verbalize the whole fucking dish to someone. Like, okay, well, from what I tasted. And I get customers to be like, oh, have you tried that? And I was like, like, I'm like yeah, I got like a smear. Yeah. <laughs> Just off the plate. And then I remember they were even like, um, do you get a discount? Or like, have you ever mm, eaten here? Mm. And I'm just like, I think I remember I told them like, oh, you know, when I got hired, I was like, oh, I'd love to take my parents here. But then I saw the price tag and I was like, oh, I can only take half a parent. <laughs> and then I told them like, when I mean half a parent, like maybe a, la- a leg or an arm, like maybe their top half so they can eat. Like I can't afford it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to maybe splurge and go to one place or something. Maybe for my birthday, I'll do that. I don't know. Um, to just like treat myself or something, mm-hmm. but yeah, this year I did. I could tell. I couldn't tell you like, like I said, it's like a very small list. And then other than that, I was like making food at home or maybe yeah. just like door dashing really quick stuff. Yeah, here yeah. and there. Mm-hmm. And then even now that I I get paid monthly, like I've kind of like really like uh, it's it's really decreased, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, to, you know, because like I'm finding being more resourceful cooking at home and stuff. Yeah. I could probably slow down a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, you got a house now. So. Oh man, I know. I'm telling you, um, but it's uh, it's nice. It's fun when we can, when we can go on some of these food adventures. You well, know, I mean, you're about to. You're going to. I mean, this guy's going to Austin, the Philippines, like within the next. <laughs> That's true. Month. That's so right. I can't wait to hear about those. You know. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait to hear about that. Yeah, me too. Good. Yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Yeah, we're going to, a group of us are going to go out to, to Austin the first uh, weekend of February. And then uh, then the week following, then I'll be traveling to the Philippines with, uh, with my family. That should be interesting, um, just the Philippines, because I feel like, I just feel like the world as a whole has like gone changed. into this, you know, well, yeah, changed into this, you know, before like, you know, eating was like a min- means to an end. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. now eating is like such a culture, so... It's like yeah, I think we we definitely got more to see what's out there. Yeah, I think we decided as a people to be more indulgent. I think with some of the things that we get to eat, for sure. Um, you know, whether it's stuff we make ourselves or stuff we just get because we we want to indulge. I think yeah, like I mean, the show is literally about it. what did we eat, what did we make. You know, <laughs> it's like so. Whoever thought that there was going to be shows about this or like oh, you man. know TikToks mm-hmm. like. Um, you know, re- even when we were at the dim sum place, like there was uh, two girls behind us and they were looking at a TikTok and looking at the food and trying oh, to yeah, figure out exactly. the dishes. And I ended up talking to them and I wanted to let them know like, Hey, that looks like, it looks like you can't order it, but just order, ask if it's available right, because it looks right. like a, a lot of them will be ordering. And they're like super nice. And yeah. 
um, I can't help but like talk to random people now <laughs> since like I, <laughs> since that's all that my job was about a year ago. Yeah, you're compelled so, to like talk to people now. Yeah, just... and I think it's nice, you know. Um, I, I actually kind of like that. I do that now. Um, but yeah, like it's so weird. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, I've I've seen some action with the Philippines in terms of like tiktokers out there and what they're cooking and stuff mm. and uh and then the restaurants like i think you can find a smash burger place i think if, oh, sure it, yeah. it will be interesting if you can find like a texas barbecue place out there oh or something like that okay and i think that's maybe something that they're it's like hawaii like um i talked to someone that's from hawaii and uh-huh. they're like if we can find a place that can do like proper mexican food mm. i think they can make like a killing so yeah. who knows i i'm like i hope you're doing your research to see what's out there yeah, you know, as far as the Philippines go, yeah, I probably need to do more research. I, I you know, I have, we have a lot of family out there, but, you know, I don't really know, you know, how many of them are, like, in, like, keep up with the food stuff over there, you know? Yeah, or, like, you know, just, I, I bet you the street food's going to be crazy. Oh, like, I bet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, for um, sure. It's probably going to be, like, dollar hits, but, like, yeah. for real dollar yeah, hits, for real you dollar know? hits, yeah. Uh, and, so, I'm excited to yeah. hear about that. Yeah, we'll definitely keep you updated, so. Oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, but for Austin too, I mean, trust me, I, and we, we do, I mean, I have a plan. I don't know. I, I had, I asked the others for suggestions and stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, I definitely have my own no, plan. No, I think they're just going to follow wherever you go. <laughs> it's going to be all- uh, Is there, um, what is it? Is it Bucky's or something uh-huh. like that? Yeah. Is there a Bucky's out there? Yeah, Are you going to go there? Are you planning to go there? Um, I mean, that's more, I mean, that's like a gas station convenience store kind I of thing. I think you should so. go there because okay. that's not really like gas station convenience, like in terms of. But they've got, you got huge stores, right? It's not, yeah. I mean, they call it convenience, but it's a huge store. It's almost like, like a. LA, that's not a thing like bodega culture, right. like New York. Um, Absolutely. And then I I remember I used to live in Michigan and we called them party stores where oh. you can buy like pizza and, and grinders <laughs> yeah, and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. LA doesn't really have that no. if you think about it. It's just no, like, no. You just get household things or like a 40 or something like that. Yeah, so exactly. I think we're a little bit behind in that culture too. I think so. I think that, and there's only really a very, very small handful of places that you see pop, like pop up or set mm-hmm. up. And again, that's more of a specialized thing yeah. uh, that you see underground it's or like whatever. a residency or something yeah. and then they're gone. Like, yeah, after exactly. A month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to be in the know. Yeah. Um, but elsewhere, it's a uh, pretty common place. So, mm-hmm. but Bucky's, I mean, you know, in addition to being a gas station, you, the convenience store, it's like, it's huge. It, it serves, it's almost like a, a small department store, you it know? It looks amazing. Like, yeah. I want to go there. And it's super these clean, days. too. And, you know, yeah, yeah, it's not trashy like a Walmart. <laughs> no, exactly. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's, there's uh, a lot to look forward to in, in, uh, in the coming year. And so a lot we'll, we'll look forward to sharing as well. Um, but if there was, if there's anything else on your list that you kind of wanted to share, um, you had in mind, but if not, they, I wanted to kind of, uh, touch a little, at least a little bit on, um, something I wanted to talk about, um, at some point. And this was, uh, regarding the LA times, uh, you know, one one list of the best restaurants in LA. And this is a, you know, a list that's released annually by the LA times headed by, in this case, uh, Mr. Bill Ad- Addison. Um, and um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of food out here in LA and there's, there's only so many, and there's so many ways I think you can like so-called rank or like group or, or I just think this spotlight. ranking is really difficult because uh-huh. I mean, for one, like RIP Jonathan Gold, because like this is technically really his list, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if Bill Addison is really like, I don't know. I'm not really into any of these critics. Like, uh, uh-huh. Jen Harris and oh, okay. Bill Addison. It's like, <laughs> do we really want to take their opinion? Do we really? I think I think that I think that everything needs new blood at this point. Like, um, you know, like I'm looking at the list and it's like, yes, that place is good. Yes, that place is good. Mm-hmm. They've been on the list for like the last five years, right? And then yes, some restaurants like Safi's, mm-hmm. um, you know, have broken through. And I think that there needs to be more of a break. I think they need to dig deeper into mm. mom and pop restaurants. Um, it's like how much like how much like pampering do you guys want you know to for it to qualify as a good restaurant mm-hmm. um and I'm trying to think like like I think that uh oh god what's the one like oy asian Asian fusion I think that they should honestly break through I think that um creme caramel la mm. Lou, I think those places like have enough like traction to break through a list like this mm. I'm not just saying that because they're Filipino places but <laughs> but I mean they've been around for quite a few years yeah. and um 
And I think that they should get the accreditation. You know, I saw new places pop up like, uh, you know, like Hallbosch has been there for mm-hmm. a while. I mean, shout out to Hallbosch. They finally got like Michelin star. I know, right? Yeah. Um, and I have like another bone to pick up the Michelin. Oh, <laughs> like, what? Is, okay. Just the fact that it's like so new in LA and it's like, oh, we're Michelin rated now. Like, so now it's like way harder to get in, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like LA doesn't need like accreditation like that because I think that the word of mouth from the people and like, you know, all of us and lo- local people that go should be enough, you know? Um, yeah. Like Moose, like Austria Moza, like cheese pocket. They've been on the list for so long. Yeah. And I think that there might need to be a list of like, instead of like LA one Oh one best times, it should be like, like tried and true and then just leave them hmm. up there. And then like, 101 new things like these are restaurants that are only like five years like yeah like five years or less like mm-hmm. running mm-hmm. blah 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 yeah um i think they need to start to break out to that because i think that it's also kind of like taking away from some places that that need that more kinda, recognition yes. that really deserve that yeah. yeah interesting like it's yeah i don't know if that's just me or like maybe um and seeing the over ex- exposing of these restaurants mm. from like social media and stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like i think pizza palace is like a big example like mm-hmm. definitely they deserve to be on 101 mm-hmm. and and definitely they've been but definitely they're overexposed like i see them in tons of like tiktoks and stuff like that but i guess it's great right because right. that's attraction so that's in a way like how new places like that break through but there are some places like you know taco places that you've gone to mm-hmm that have been around like you know evil tacos or whatever like they, oh, yeah. i think they uh-huh. should have broken through or maybe there should be like a new up-and-comers like hmm. with the the potential of becoming a real restaurant or like this is a must like to me like evil cooks is like a must i mm. think that you should definitely go there interesting yeah yeah well mr addison uh if you're listening to this, uh, you got your new deputy kind of critic right here. Don't this to me, goddamn it! <laughs> no, no, quite the opposite. Let's <laughs> let's bring her on board and uh, get get a, get the new list going. You know, it's interesting. I don't I don't know if this is uh, I don't know. I, I'm just making this analogy, but um, it, it in the barbecue world, there is the Texas Monthly um, Top 50, which mm-hmm. is the best of the best. You know, barbecue joints. Uh, like period, I guess. You know, the authority by Mr. Daniel Vaughn. But in addition to that. And, and this this is a list that's released, I think, every three years. Uh, so the most recent one is from 2021, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, but anyway, in addition to that, there is also subsequent lists to what you're saying. Like, you know, you have the top 50, but you have, like, let's say the top 25 or so of, like, the up-and-comers, right? Like, yeah. they're truly excellent, you know, and they're still new and, you know, yeah. they, they... Like, is it going to take more work to make these lists? Probably, but, like, were you going to eat there anyways? Yeah, you were going to eat there anyways. <laughs> I think you so. Know, yeah. Like, um, I don't. <laughs> like, no, of course. I mean, it's kind of like, I hate to say it, like, it's sometimes boring, you know, like, um, okay. Like this is a terrible analogy. Remember when like the Lakers were just winning all Wait the time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we sure. love that though. But in a way it was like, okay, they're like winning all the, I would love to see someone else break through. <laughs> like I hate to see them lose, but it would be so great if like someone would break through. Like I think that, yeah, we need to start giving like other places chances, mm, mm. Um, especially in a time of the way things are like cost right now. Yeah. You know, um, like a lot of people are really like, not really making a buck, like trying to, to make food for their restaurant and stuff like that because yeah. of inflation. So yeah, I just, I just think it would be really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Shout out to whoever made it to the one Oh one, you know, <laughs> several restaurants that I've worked at, you yeah. know, that are on it. And there's a reason why, like why I wanted to the, work there, yeah, why exactly. I was a part of that success, mm-hmm. but not mentioned, but I was a part of that success. Like, great um but yeah i would love it if like we had like new blood Mm. because we know moza is always going to be fire we always know like republic Mm -hmm, is going to be great like yeah you know we always know that uh providence and all those places are going to be good but i think that the uni to start putting them in their own like fine dining i see yeah their own list with their own pockets yeah um it's but you know in context right Mm -hmm. putting it in more proper context yeah yeah because you're right i think it 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 gets crowded, especially in a place here like L.A. Um, I don't, again, uh, well, going back to kind of what you said about, you know, the Michelin stuff, like, um, you, you th- it sounds like you don't think that it it's, I don't know, it's maybe as important, I, I mean, suppose. we've gone so long without Michelin stars. It's like, oh, now you want to give us Michelin okay. stars, you know? But, you know, the chefs, I, I'm sure that they, those are things that they... 
you know, they're seeking, right? I mean, you know, kind of a lifelong achievement, some, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure some of them do. Um, but at the same time, like, I feel like you're just chasing it and then you're not really wanting you and yes you're giving experience but i don't know it's kind of like really are you doing it for the people are you doing it for yourself and then if you get a michelin star great or are you doing it for the star you know sometimes it's like stressful too yeah. mm-hmm. like i worked at a michelin uh starred restaurant recently and um god people would just freak out if you just like i think that guy's like a critic oh my god uh-huh. like keep checking on him like where's he going what's he doing he keeps asking questions like, oh I think sure this guy's immediately like you know so it's like so stressful you yeah know? absolutely and it's like once you have a star I'm, i feel like there's like so much stress that even when you lose it and then mm-hmm. you lose it it's like oh my god like now we gotta like work on getting it back and yeah and it's like shouldn't you have been good like since day one day one anyways? yeah anyways mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that's right yeah so that's like this whole existential like crisis that you're just thinking of. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's a struggle uh, for that. I think ne- next time I go to, if ever I do find myself at a Michelin star or some other high-end restaurant, I should, uh, I heard like some people, they just bring a notebook with me and then just sit down and just start writing stuff down. I and mean, then- <laughs> I actually want to do that because I think it's just fun to keep a like memory of that. Uh, I was going to say my cousin's husband does that. Mm. He did that when he went to my restaurant and they all freaked out. And I was like, <laughs> He's like a mathematician, like smart guy. Like he's not a critic. He's just doing this out of his own leisure. But um, later on after I stopped working there and I had a night off and, you know, I I had dinner at their house, he let me look at the book and I liked it. It was like reason for going, cousin's birthday, like Mm. music, really fun music playlist, um, server, like Jane, really nice um, (laughs) tattoos. You know, like, so I think that... Yeah, I saw a TikTok recently where they're like, do that. And then they think you're a fucking cr- critic and then you'll get the best <laughs> service. Like, I don't think you should do that um, personally. But I think that if you want to, like, create, like, an experience for yourself, mm-hmm. especially someone that, uh, you know, you, you like to go to a lot of restaurants. I think it'd be great if you had different books, like traveling, like Texas. Like, I went here, like, yeah. order this. Next time, don't order that. Yeah. Um, bring wipes. Has bathroom, you yeah. know, like yeah. I think that would be great, you know. And then yeah, there are like apps you can do, but there is something about you know writing it yourself. Journaling it down. Yeah, uh-huh. I definitely want to start. Like today, I was going to the dim sum place, and I was thinking, I really need to start like a notebook, like of mm. like places that I can go that I can be like, this was a great restaurant. Yeah. Like this is the chef. Get a copy of the menu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just kind of collect it like that. Um, I think that would just be nice. You know, I, I don't want to like, freak people, staffers out that I'm a critic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe you should just have it labeled on there. You know, the <laughs> this is not. I am not a critic. Yeah. This is just leisure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, pretty good. Um, so that, okay. Good to get your thoughts on some of that, you know, kind yeah. of the one-on-one. I mean, again, a lot of these places um, that we have on here, I mean, obviously well-deserved, um, but we would look forward to certainly like, again, uh, more of the uh, the underdog, the smaller guys. I don't know. Yeah, like let's go for the underdogs, you know. Um, but I think Moose Barbecue was like, to me, I was like really happy that Good. they got, they, they, they were got pretty high in. up there, you know? Yeah. They work their asses off. They sure do. That, that couple, Michelle and, um, and Andrew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super nice people. Like, yeah, you always feel like you're a part of a family when they say hi to you. They just make everyone feel welcome. Like so good. Like yeah. so delicious. I, I will say, I'll just share that because I was there, um, I don't know, a few, a few days ago, uh, just for dinner so on my way home, but, um, I had, or- it was later in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, they, so I ordered a small tray. They had all the meats and stuff, by the way, like all the meats were still excellent by around that <laughs> so later afternoon and the brisket was still nice and moist. Oh, okay. So sorry. Good. All yeah. right, but anyway, <laughs> like I was eating, I was inside and, uh, there was another couple that had ordered before me and they were seated at a table just across. And I think they're also, I want to say they're also maybe restaurant people, but I'm not, I, I just don't know. Uh-huh. Like, okay, but for sure, like Michelle was there mm-hmm. and, uh, she had visited them at their table and talked to them. And I think, yeah, again, I think the restaurant people too. Um, but they were chatted up and I'm sure like, I'm sure I wanted to talk to her too at some point, but you know, I had, I was almost done, you yeah. know, with my food, but I had, uh, 
I had finished and then I had thrown away my, tr- you know, tossed my tray or whatever. And I was about to head out. And then she, she, she made it a point to like, kind of, uh, point it out and say, and say goodbye before I left, like, yeah. Oh, goodbye. And, you know, so, so she did, you know, kind of recognize and, yeah. you know, acknowledge me, which I, which she's, I thought was really she's great. Definitely like the face of moves. Yeah, absolutely. She's great. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. So I felt like a little, I felt a little like, um, you know, shy, I guess, because I didn't want to interrupt, you know, what, what they were talking about there. But I was, I was, I, I was really uh, glad that she still made it a point to, you know, say hello. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, we know them when they were just popping up. Popping up, like up cafes exactly. Cafes or like whatever. Yeah, breweries it's and, you know. So the, amazing. The whole tr- and all the drama and yeah, ups and, they're and downs. Only, they're only open, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Uh, is it Thursday? Uh or maybe as soon as Wednesday? Shoot, I don't remember. Something like that. But I love that they're only open those days. Like, <laughs> I'm sure there was some schmuck being like, why don't you open up five days a week? You make yeah, so ex- much more. Then they're like, no. Yeah. And, I, and I'm totally... I stand next to that. No, mm-hmm. it's not. It's not an easy thing. No, it's 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 not convenient. You just think it's a good idea because it's convenient. Free, yeah, exactly. Yeah, their fucking quality is gonna go down if they do that, mm-hmm. unless they get more pit masters to help them out or something. Right. Or maybe they're like aiming for another spot. Okay, sure, but no, mm-hmm. like just keep it as it is. We love it. You yep. know, maybe you'll challenge yourself down the down the down the line or whatever. Right. But they want a healthy work life balance too. They have like two kids and their mm-hmm. kids help out in the restaurant. I think it's super cute. Exactly. I think there was one time like one of them wanted to switch games. They're like, All right, bus tables. <laughs> and hey, that's how me and my brother did it when we owned a fish market. Mm-hmm. We wanted a Nintendo, hey, go sweep the floor yeah. and, and work tag for that. some yeah. cans. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's like so cute to see them in their tiny like aprons just oh, like whizzing right? around. Exactly. I mean, who knows about child labor laws in the U.S., but <laughs> old-fashioned old fashioned families that run businesses, like, you work there. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Good family values. <laughs> yeah, so I love Moose for that. Yeah, Moose. I'm glad they were high up as they were. Top 10 for sure, I believe. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Heritage was also on there, another excellent barbecue spot. I have yet to try because it's OC, but I know. Um, all of my friends that live in the OC love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're fantastic. I've, I've met them, too, when, when they came to my work. Really nice people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, guy has like brisket tattooed on his throat. <laughs> like yeah. you better love. You oh, he better does, love and barbecue. they do. Trust me. And they're they're opening another spot. Uh, not not that it's anywhere closer. It's all the way out in Oceanside, but that's more focused as a brewery. So they're making their own brews oh, too. Wow. In addition to that's a big step. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's more brew focused with with nice different eats there, but um, they're still keeping obviously their, um, you know, their original spot all for right, barbecue, great. but. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good places, um, and I hope that we, if we revisit this again, um, hopefully we'll see a different type of list, or you know, maybe I don't Damn, know. Damn, I hope so. I mean, I don't know if anyone's <laughs> listening to this thing. Uh, you know, I'm not. We're not Andrew Wang or <laughs> fucking Jen Harris or, or any of these Mr. crazy Mr. or Farley. Like yeah. whatever fucking sibling of like whatever like Bobby Flay's second <laughs> niece removed like nepo babies, but. I, no, you know, like LA, there's it's not shy or mm-hmm. devoid of like places, like the Midwest or something like. And who knows, like you know, like food is getting more and more popular, and there are people that are starting to just do what they want in mm-hmm. terms of what they're cooking and stuff like that. So I'm I'm really excited to see like what else like we 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 kind of stumble upon in exchange and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be on more episodes. I th- well, we could not get our shit together for the Christmas break. It's I, I think we got a little too relaxed, you know, yeah. and just enjoying our break a little too much. Yeah, we so. were like, let's reschedule. And then, like, I never got a, <laughs> like, a message. So I know. That's why I like. I was like, oh, let's go dim some and then figure something else out. There you out. go. So this is uh, the result of that. So we're, we're jump-starting it again. And no, and I'm excited to, when you come back, you know, maybe, like, when you come back from the Philippines, like, mid-February, mm-hmm, late mm-hmm. February. Okay. So I can't wait to see, like, next month to, like, Tell me everything. Yeah, 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 for sure. Don't worry. Um, you're you're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere <laughs> Apparently too. Apparently not. No. All right, we're we're gonna keep you around, and uh, we're gonna have you. Uh, just love having you on. So yeah. Um, but thank you know, you. but I think uh, with that said, I think we've come to the end of of another episode. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. So make sure to reach out. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Dumb and Hungry, and she's at, at Blunt Sarcasm. Um, <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Is, <laughs> now it'd be amazing if you'd like to follow my personal adventures. Yo, you should definitely do so. <laughs> I'm also uh, on Be Real. If anyone does a Be Real, are you into Be Real yet? The Be Real TV? Uh, Wait, it's what? like an app. So you basically just like take a random photo uh-huh. and then that's it for Be Real. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to look at that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Jeremy, you also have a, a you know a podcast that people can can listen to as well, right? I, I do. It's all about capoeira. It's called the Capoeira Podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm actually uh, they're they're not as like the episodes are not as as consistent as these may be. Mm. Um, but actually, I was going to say in, in January 14th, I'm going to or the 21st, I'm going to try to like hopefully get an audio version of this. But I will be speaking on a panel about Capoeira Podcasts. Really? Um, yeah, out in West Adams. There's like a Capoeira event, and I've been invited to that panel, so that should be really interesting to see what comes out of my mouth. Oh wow! In terms of questions. Well, we'll look forward to that. I think that, yeah, that's very cool. I know you're be exciting. I know you've been practicing it for a very long time, and so you definitely know your shit. So yeah. Uh. <laughs> so that's another. There's a very niche podcast, just like this one, but it's about Capoeira, whereas this one's about food. And um, that one's called uh, the Capoeira podcast. The Capoeira. Yeah. The Capoeira. Okay, don't yeah, forget that. Capoeira it's the authority podcast. on Capoeira. So. Yes. <laughs> very good. But you can also, uh, in addition, you can email us uh we have uh we have the email hi at dumbandhungry.com um while we are kind of recording this kind of as a um kind of off offline if you will uh we also do stream on youtube uh normally so you can jump on us uh, on the chat and and maybe chat with us when we are um and then you can also find the audio wherever pine podcasts are served but until next time i'm angelo i'm jamie and on your next food adventure remember to try one of each. Yeah.